and she has a tiger tattoo, and that's when he knows she is most worthy of him. Right, okay. yeah, symbolism, that's, that's good, with Sim- actual sim- symbols. <laughs> now hear this, now hear this, all hands on deck, it's the George Rockle Schmidt Show. Today we're going to be talking about ideas for a potential Top Gun sequel. Yes, which would be one number. I, Top I, Gun 2, right? I believe so, yes. I think okay. uh, in the uh, days that have passed, we have done some research, much to the <laughs> surprise of our listeners. I, it wasn't an e- a research issue. It was, uh, it was an issue that I misspoke. I misspoke when I said Top Gun 3. Actually, we're doing uh, Land of the Dead 2, or I don't know, whatever. <laughs> okay. Oh, so we're just jumping ship completely. We'll talk about something else. Well, um, yeah, I guess so, because last night, I wanted to bring this up, last night I saw Pass Through. Do you know what that is? I've abs- I have no idea what that is. It's Neil Breen's latest film, not including the one he's making right now. Oh my fucking God. Bio- yeah, it, it's called Pass Through, P-A-S-S space T-H-R-U. Right, okay. There is no, there is no through in this film. Neil Breen <laughs> does not go through anything where he collects burgers or anything like that. I have no idea why you would spell it like that. Isn't that it's the, bizarre. Is, is it not the conventional it's American spelling? or, or is <laughs> it... <laughs> Yeah, because they... Do you, know, do you know how Americans spell colour? C-O-L-U. That's it. <laughs> the, the Americans have this thing where if they want to tell you that someone was going fast... They'll write it down, and it'll be like he was traveling with great speed. And depending on how fast he was traveling at, depends on how many E's they use. If he was traveling very fast, they might use like 18 or 21 E's. It's got to be a multiple of three, but they can use as many as they want. They could use 300 E's. It's easy. Right, okay. So in this it's a situ- very easy language to learn, English, American English. Right, okay. So, I mean, I'm a little bit fuzzy on this, this situation here. So you've approached someone in the street. Um, a car has gone past, say. And I you know, said, write down some speed. <laughs> Was this just a setup for that? No. Yeah. <laughs> what, what are you talking about? I go, go up to a car. What are you talking about? I'm not so, a prostitute, David. No, oh, fucking hell. Much to my chagrin. Anyway, so this guy. So you've approached um, a gentleman in the street, right? Uh, it's nighttime. A gentleman night caller. Yes. Um, so a man going for pizzas. So you've. You've asked them how fast this uh, car is going past, and as opposed to communicate in this English language, they hurriedly produce a notebook from their breast pocket, <laughs> and they simply yeah. write down speed. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, a man walked past here very quickly, did he? He had a whippet, he had a flat cap. Uh, anyway, why, would, why the fuck are we talking about this? We're talking about pass-through. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyone who doesn't know Neil Breen, Neil Breen uh, directed a film called Double Down, um, which for uh, the briefest of times was on Netflix, back when, back when Netflix would have stuff on which wasn't just garbage it had bought from a distributor for $10 a movie. It was quite random stuff often. Uh, and and one of the random things Netflix had on it when it, it started out was a film called Double Down, which was uh, a film almost entirely made by Neil Breen. Mm-hmm. Cinema uh, Neil Breen, Cinema Goal. Neil Breen directs, produces... And in the credits, both in, um, I'm not sure if in Double Down, but definitely in this last one, uh, in Pass Through, uh, and in Fateful Findings, uh, he has these credits, and they they list him as basically writer, director, producer, editor. And then they have all this other stuff, and it's like, the lighting was done by Lights and Films, or something like that. The catering was done by mmm catering, and then at the end of the credits, which are really <laughs> short anyway, he reveals that all of these companies were in fact Neil Breen. Oh. and it's just bizarre. It's just bizarre that you would do that. Mm-hmm. I've been to short film festivals, uh, which, I, yeah, I, I I have never found enjoyable because they're just full of dirge. <laughs> uh, I, I love fil- I, I love film. I'm I'm a film lover. I'm a cinephile. I hate short films, but uh, the, there are some really good short films at film festivals. But you get this thing often where you'll get like a four minute movie, but then a minute long credit sequence, and it's like it's a short film, guys. Four people worked on it. You need a plate. Yeah, you need <laughs> a plate. Like if you, if you directed it, but if you also made the sandwiches, you don't need to list yourself as caterer. <laughs> You don't. You don't. Either. Just say you're the director. It's fine. I don't. I. You know. I've never gone looked at a short film where they've 
they've done the, the basic credits. I've never gone. Well, that's that's bullshit. They clearly they clearly had a little jib. Who was the who was the fucking master of that? <laughs> who was the cable basher? I need to know who the cable basher was. I've never looked at a short film and thought they didn't list anyone for gaffering. That doesn't make sense. I don't know. I guess if they're opening their own packets of crisps, they're going to want fucking acknowledgement for it, though. Oh, if you were the DOP, I don't care if you stuck some cables onto the floor. It's fine. You were the DOP. That's what you get credited for. You don't need to be credited for everything. I don't know. I mean, I I've, I've I've went to that one short film festival uh, many years ago with you. I think it was called like the Run Film Festival or something like that. Um, I think it was a bit bigger than that. I think it was Rain Dance we went to. <laughs> I think it was. And I don't know. I mean, a lot of the stuff I thought was, wasn't even worthy. Uh, I don't know. I feel like had I been working on stuff like that, I would I would, I would bury my name. Uh, Really, I would not mm. kind of. Uh, I would not be. I would not be proud to be associated with some of the stuff that I saw in uh, those places. I can never remember what it was, um, but it, well, I always remember when we kind of vaguely touched on it. But there was something that I saw in one of those places, which is essentially it was essentially this animated thing, but it was like an extended poem or so, poem or something like that. Oh, and yeah, it was, right. And I, I mean, I. I knew at the time I would want to kind of be able to remember as much as possible to quote it, but for the life of me, I cannot remember any of it, but I just remember being the most self-satisfied, smug piece of shit I've ever yeah. fucking seen. And it was like a Flash animation. Yeah, it was really cheap. If it wasn't Flash, it was like something that he'd um, scrawled on like um, like layout paper and like crayons and shit like that. Yeah. It was incredibly oh, yeah. crude. And I'm sure he would have, you know, the, the filmmaker would have told you that that was part of the charm and it was, you know, it was for a very specific purpose. But, oh, I don't know, it just made my fucking blood boil. One thing you see on these short films often, uh, and yeah, just to reiterate, some of them are really good. But one thing you see is uh, at the end, someone will have put, uh, this film was made in in one and a half days. And it's like, okay, uh, yeah, it, you've, it, it's an achievement, that you've done that. But you know when, when an audience goes to see a proper big boy film, then, <laughs> then, then, you know, no one ever turns to someone else and says, this is shit. But, but I hear that the editing, I hear that they didn't have a lot of time for that. So, five stars. It doesn't matter if, if you know, for whatever reason, external reason, your film looks shit. It doesn't matter if it's not your fault. I mean, I mean, can you imagine if I fucking wrote a book in German and everyone was like, "This, this is fucking almost incomprehensible," and I was like, "Well, I barely speak German. I think it's, I think it's excellent considering I barely fucking speak German." No one cares. <laughs> this took me one and a half days to write. This took me. <laughs> it's eighty thousand words. It's both the forward and the acknowledgement. <laughs> it is unbearable. Well, yeah, yeah, and and kind of. Um, I suppose the flip side of that, you you hear a lot of people who have short films and they do like little interviews or whatever, or they've got a little pamphlet out in the, you know, the short film circuit, and it's something about you know this is my short film and this one shot we had to do 115 times, this one shot we had to do so many times because it's all edit in camera and you know it's a pan left and then uh, there's choreography with the actors and then we've got to move the lights without you seeing moving the lights and it's like and maybe that shot does look really good. I don't care how many times you had to do it, right? I, I, I don't care how, how, how... I mean, I I do care how you achieved it in that I'm interested in it, but I don't think that makes the film good or bad. Yeah, I mean, it's nature of the beast, isn't it? I mean, It's the I, nature of the beast. You know, I mean, if, if Jaws worked really well, if the animatronics Jaws worked really well, then fine. You know, the story is it didn't, but it still, you know, it still looks okay on the movie for the most part. It doesn't matter if it took them a long time or not. Well, yeah, I, I, I suppose in the case of Jaws, that's just more of a kind of interesting bit of trivia, which uh, right. Um, yeah, going sure. back to that uh, that short movie when they kind of when they throw up that at the end of the uh, credits that it, it was shot in, I think you said it was two days or a day and a half or something. Oh like well, that. whatever. Yeah, I mean, I'm not thinking of a specific example, but yeah. Well, I imagine it's. I mean, it's it's for one or two reasons. Now it's either a brag or kind of. Uh, I mean, I'm much more skeptical. I think it's like a, a reason an to excuse. kind of forgive, yeah, an excuse really, yeah. and a reason to kind of kind of overlook certain uh, fucking issues of quality in what you've just watched. I mean, I, I mean, I've sat down and watched uh, movies with you, and I think if the, I saw that kind of uh, come up after we watched something, you'd be like, "Well, they should have spent more fucking time on that, like straight yeah. away." <laughs> I don't need to know that fucking shit. It's like, oh, fucking hell. I mean, you know what this is reminding me of? It's um, 
when uh, we watched uh, fucking Tusk and right at the end, like, this was based on a podcast. And like, oh my <laughs> God. Is this supposed, uh, yeah, again, we, I remember us being confused. Is that a brag or are we supposed to overlook certain things at this point? Uh, yeah, I suppose, I suppose at best it's an explanation. <laughs> I offer you this, this insight so that you might, in fact, let me off the hook. I mean, I, I you know, that's the kind of gripe with some short films, but a lot of um, you know budgeted, even studio films. A lot of them, or maybe not, maybe not big studio films, but a lot of them, you'll hear things like, "Yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, this scene, the CGI looks really bad, but that's because we had to change things in the last three weeks." And it's like, "Well, I'm sorry, and and that does make sense, but I don't care. <laughs> I, I don't, okay, so there's a reason it looks shit, but." Just, just think it. Think around it. Do something else. Then. Yeah. There's, so, there's so much I see on on films, on films with like a ten million dollar budget, where I look at it and I think it would be better if you cut that scene out, and there was just a gap, in in the story where you, where you had to kind of like think. You, even if they put up a fucking, even if they put up a title and it said three months later, Benny did this or some shit. <laughs> yeah, that would be better than so, some of the stuff they they like leave in there because they don't have time. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, um, yes. we went from fateful findings to I hate movies. I hate all movies. Where's my fucking oh. quality? I'm not interested Where's... in your fucking excuses. I'm not interested in your excuses, Tom Cruise. Eh? <laughs> the mummy was just plain, just very plain, Tom Cruise. Eh? Oh. Um, so, well, do you want to go into uh, Top Gun now? I have, I have more shit to spill. Uh, <laughs> we, we haven't even talked about Fateful Findings. Uh, yeah, not Fateful uh, Findings, yeah, but I was about to say, Pass did, Through. Yeah, I mean, I don't remember what uh, any of the specifics of Pass Through yet. Uh, do you want to go back to that later, or do you want to keep on it now? Um, well, uh, there's nothing really to say about Pass Through. It's, um, I, I'm going to say it's a two-hour movie, but maybe I should just... I don't know. I don't. Know. Uh, it felt like I, two hours, a minimum of two fucking hours. Well, it, it, I think it's a two-hour movie, but it it feels like forty minutes and four hours because it feels like forty minutes because nothing happens in it. Mm-hmm. Nothing happens in it at all. It's exactly like Double Down. It's just Neil Breen in the desert walking around and basically making a list of people he hates. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, which I'll go into in a second. But the reason it feels like four hours is because. Of the exact same reason, it's you know nothing happens. There's no arc mm-hmm. or anything. Essentially, G- uh, Jesus comes to Earth in the form <laughs> of a sixty-year-old man with a slightly hunched back who's got um, who's got hair like auburn hair, like my gran. Like Neil Breen looks like my grandma. You know, okay. the hair's yeah, obviously yeah. dyed, and he's got these tight old woman lips and these weird jowls and. It, he just looks like an old dude, right? Yeah. But yeah. He, he but he's running around the desert, and there's obviously an actress he's employed because he wants to ask her to go to fucking I don't know TGI Fridays afterwards or something, and it's all. Mm. But basically, the story is Jesus come Jesus inter intergalactic Jesus comes to comes to Earth and is fucking really annoyed because humans fuck each other over and and basically he snaps his fingers and he kills millions and millions of people all at once that he that he deems unworthy right okay now how did how does the movie put this across does he just simply say that the lives are gone or do we have like some wonderful stock footage that illustrates this point there's no stock footage in this one i don't think but there's a lot of stock green screen backgrounds a right, lot okay. there's, there's an amazing sequence where he um he goes to a part I think it's one party, but it looks like separate parties, um, to essentially confront the uh, the cabal of CEOs and and judges and Maso- Masonic figures and people on the take, and they're all like, it's basically all all the shots are four different people, four four different groups of people every time in front of like a catalog image of a model home. Right. Okay. I mean, does he it, act, is he ever in shot in the same shot with other people? Yeah, he's in the same shot. Yeah, they've got a full size green screen. 
Right, you know, okay. ooh, it's it's ooh, fucking hell, Damien. It's like ten feet tall. It's ooh, it's the real deal. It's the real McCoy. The way you're talking about it, I'm I'm seeing that you know he's got stock footage of parties, right? And you've got like the you know the oh, that'd be amazing. There, and like he's he's there in front of it, right? And it's just the match. The lighting doesn't match whatsoever. So he's trying to kind of he's writing his script about around whatever's happening in the in the stock footage, right? He's trying to react to something that's obviously happening on a screen behind him. Well, there's there's stock footage of. Uh, a tiger and he's meant to like interact with the tiger and all it is is like a close-up of the tiger on the right and then a close-up of neil breen and the background on the left and then some like wonderful running on the spot (laughs) but it's like it's like if he was talking to this tiger if he was engaging with this tiger or whatever um he would be like four inches away from its face and he would (laughs) he would have to be either kind of you know like laying down with his back arching up so his face could be next to the tiger's face, or he would have to have dug like a little trench to stand in. <laughs> yes, I, yeah. Or I the see. tiger's standing up on its hind legs and it's got his its paws on Neil Breen's shoulders and somehow he's holding it up. It just doesn't. I know that's only a small thing, but it, it, all of this film is just abhorrent. Yeah, of course. Oh, wow. So, so Neil Breen, at least twice. He goes through a list of people in society he fucking hates. And it's like the judiciary. I hate the judiciary. I hate judges. I hate congressmen. I hate senators. I hate governors. They're all corrupt. I hate CEOs of big businesses. So I hate, I hate the police force. So is he ha- right, right in this list? Is he trying to feed it to Jesus and he's going to snap his fingers again? He is Jesus. And then... <laughs> and basically, he, 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 yeah, he goes up to... <laughs> He goes up to someone who I guess is like a people trafficker, but it's not very established. And he says, you're gone. And then they fade away. And then he breaks into, I guess it's meant to be CNN or something. And he goes to the newscasters, you're gone. And they fade away. And then he addresses the world through CNN, saying that he's basically he's basically a fucking lunatic tyrant who's taken control of the world and he's going to purge the world. And it's like, Neil Breen, you're, you're the bad guy in this movie. Oh, fuck You've yeah. decided to impose your fucking your intergalactic <laughs> standards on Earth. No oh. one asked you here, right? Okay, because that's what that was something I'm, I was unclear about. So Neil Breen is Jesus. Yeah, Just to well, clarify. He, is, he doesn't say Jesus, but there is a part where in in his fucking massive backyard in Las Vegas or whatever, it, there is a part where they've got kind of like a, I want to say it's a golden spiral of. Of rocks they've put on the ground. I don't think it is that. I think it's just like a almost a labyrinth right, okay. of rocks they've put on, put in the the sun baked dirt in Las Vegas. And there's a, there's a bit where he stood in the middle of this labyrinth or this this pattern, and he stood and his arms are out like he's on the cross, and he just revolves. Right. Like he just revolves on the spot. He just walks. Walks or he just turns around it's on the spot with his arms out, and it's just like what? Is it's a really protracted shot. It's like the better part of a minute, right? <laughs> and it's completely it, static. It's repeated, and oh. oh, and the and the worst thing is, is Neil Breen has since his last film that we watched, Neil Breen has discovered drone technology. Oh fucking hell! So there's a good a like a good five percent, which doesn't sound a lot, but think about it. A good five percent of this movie is drone shots, <laughs> and if you look in the very carefully for like at least eight, you know, like forty frames, you can see Neil Breen in the corner with his iPhone piloting it. Um, I mean, I I thought this when I watched it. I can't believe it isn't Neil Breen piloting it because the piloting is so incompetent. <laughs> he must have a buddy who just had a drone. They I, they either strapped a camera on it or it's a cheap drone with a camera in it. Oh no! I mean, I I want to see. It's like, uh, I mean, how's the like the quality of the shot? I mean, well, like it's the all, resolution it's all of the camera. Eyeing. It's all like fish eyeing, right? So it's it's kind of not good. Like, I mean, that can be on purpose, but it, I don't think it is. But it, it's but all the quality of the actual movement is like there's a drone and it's hovering and it's very still because it's a drone and then suddenly it gains 20 feet in altitude and stops immediately, and then it turns right like it's a robot. There's no fluid shot, right? Right, okay. I mean, the way I imagine it's just that he's been completely captivated by um, GoPro footage and GoPro technology, right? And uh, it's just, he's, 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 
he's in love with the idea, but you know, he he's trying to like set. He's talking to his like illegitimate daughter or something like that, or stepdaughter or something like that. Um, he's the only person he's got left in his weird little life, and she, he's like, I want to do this so I can make this, 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 and she's like immediately no. So he's got one of his body for, uh, buddies from like the real. Uh, from the estate agents that he works, right? And they've just yeah. got like... He's an architect, Damien. He's an architect. <laughs> <laughs> sure he is. Yeah, go on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell. God knows what fucking death traps that man would build. I mean, um, don't, don't forget, the home is where the heart is. <laughs> Neil Breen is an architect of love. Oh, of course. Yeah. I.e. a realtor. And I'm sure that's yeah. exactly this, what's going to be on his fucking uh, his, uh, his business card as well. I'm sure that's the magic dust getting in between the cogs in his brain. Oh dear. Anyway, you were saying. Yeah, no, as opposed to like drone, um, they've just got this, this. He's got this kind of like weird dude from the office, you know, probably. Uh, yeah. Who just has like one of those old remote control helicopters, and they just like got. Uh, they've just they bought like some cheap ass fucking webcam to kind of simulate the simulate yeah. the experience, but it's just absolute dog shit. Yeah, I mean, I saw that as well, but you can get drones for very cheap now. Like, you can get a drone that has a camera built into it for less than $200. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can. I mean, I don't, you know, it's not going to be a great... It's going to be a, a webcam camera, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's it's more the sort of drone that you want to want to buy if you've got to get some cocaine into your local prison. <laughs> I was going to say you know what I mean? something you don't mind fucking landing because you're just using it to fucking perv on someone. You know, if they fucking, if they lamp a rock at this thing, you're happy that it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, oh, just, just, it just, oh, it just, it's just sucked my brain through a hoop. It's, it's something else. Yeah, it does say it sounds fucking mind boggling. I mean, I, we watched the, what was it, Double Down at fucking... Yeah, you know, it, what's it? Uh, One hundred and fifty percent playback or whatever it was, and even that was fucking no longer no, than. No, we watched we watched it at a hundred hundred and ten percent speed. Oh really? Still. Yeah. So if anyone if anyone doesn't know, I do this thing sometimes where if I watch a film that I know I don't want to watch, but I have to watch it to talk about it or something like that, or just to see it, sometimes I'll watch it slightly faster than I should, <laughs> just to save myself ten minutes. I don't know. I think it came quite. It came in handy when we were doing this stuff, and it was like, it was like half an hour of my life, which I I I claimed I back. Yeah, exactly. I think it's an but invaluable. Then, then like when we talk about these movies, if you listen, all we say is like, yeah, it was it wasn't a good movie, but very pacey, very pacey. <laughs> the irony being that anyone who listened to this is doing exactly the same thing just to get through it. <laughs> the only people listening to this, Damien, are, are people who are lo- looking for something they can exploit to you know, bring litigation against us. I don't, I didn't think that we were public enough figures for that to kind of really be, uh, you know, lucrative. Oh, no, I, no, I imagine that the, the person doing that is it's someone all archived. who sat in, the, sat in their <laughs> pants e- e- eating beans talking about when they passed the bar 35 years ago and weren't an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so anyway, anyway, double down, it's um, not double down, fucking pass through. It's... It's essentially double down again. It's it's almost like he could have just made that ten years ago, and this is just the footage he didn't use. It's exactly the same. Because um, I've seen Fateful Findings as well, and I really, r- honestly, I'm not just saying this. I really struggle to differentiate those films. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. That was going to be my follow up. I I, can't, I I made the assumption that they were going to be very fucking similar. Very similar. I mean, if anything, I'd say double. Um, Double Down is far superior to Pass Through. <laughs> I just yeah, love pa- the fucking idea of like Double Down being the benchmark for quality <laughs> in any context. In Pass Through, he, he's got a lot of extras. And I think he obviously thought this will give it some production value because he does have a lot. And none of them can act. It's not even like he went to a, a theatre school to get some people. Like, I don't know what he did. I don't know if they're, you know... If they're friends, it can't be friends of his. If they're people he works with or something, or friends of people he works with, but they're bad. But because because he obviously is Neil Breen and on the fucking happy side of autist, <laughs> um, he doesn't he doesn't know how to direct people. So like you'll have someone running and then it will cut to a close up of them and they will be stock still. <laughs> you, like a, a lot of people in this fucking movie shoot people in the head and they'll shoot someone in the head and then it will just cut and that, that person will be laying down on their back <laughs> eyes wide open you know they're checking their watch for the time as well 
It's like, yeah, that's good enough. Fine. Well, he's got some kids in there as well. And I cannot believe that they they aren't his nieces and nephews. They must be related to him. Why else would they be in there? Uh, otherwise, I don't think any any parent in their right mind would kind of, you know, leave yeah. their child in the supervision of Neil Breen, even if they were on yeah. set. That doesn't like look like a very comfortable prospect. Yeah, because everyone else is from Gumtree or or Craigslist or something, right? I mean, everyone else, you're talking like, it, you know, a $30, $30 a day sort of actor. Right, okay. Because I, cause I imagine that he does save a lot of money to do these films, but I also imagine he spends all of the money on the film stock. Yeah, I can, I, I can see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In his own way, he's quite tight. In his own way, he's like, well, this character's only got a couple of lines. Oh, I'll just get Lenny to do it. <laughs> Calls up Lenny. He's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've got this. And, and Lenny's like, yeah, but you know, I, I have this weird thing where I can't not look at the camera when it's shooting me. And he's like, oh, I'll be fine. Yeah, we can make that work. We'll get it in editing. It's fine. Get it in editing, yeah. Neil Breen is the editor as well. <laughs> so we'll just say, like, your character's kind of allergic to direct light or something. It'll be really mysterious. <laughs> He's allergic to direct light. The only the only respite he has from the harsh Vegas sun <laughs> is staring into my into my lens. Oh fucking hellfire. Oh. There's none of that. There's no one stares into the lens, but there is a lot of You killed her. You killed her and she is dead. You killed her. There's a lot of stuff like that. Where are you? Have you seen the? Have you, I think it's Fateful Findings where, where Neil Breen says, "I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. I can't believe you committed suicide." <laughs> have you seen that? I'll put. I'll, okay, I'll roll that clip right now. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. How could you have done this? How could you have committed suicide? Yeah, that isn't Double Down. That is Fateful Findings. Okay, so that is the difference. All right, so so let's just face it. We're talking about what would happen if Neil Breen directed Top Gun. <laughs> Top Gun 2, right? Yeah, okay. Let's, yeah, I think we can we can start here. Half of this has been about Neil Breen. That's That's got to be what we're doing now. Yeah. Okay, I think, you know, just throw up um, just like a picture of his face as a thumbnail with just Top Gun written on it. That's maverick. <laughs> Well, that brings me to um, that brings me to the idea of putting Jake Paul or Logan Paul in there. Do you know who that is? I don't know. Uh, Fucking uh, good for you. Good for you. <laughs> is this is this sarcastic or is that no is that, no a, no seriously? He's a excellent. fucking nobody nobody dickhead on the internet. Well, as any fucking person is. You know who thinks he's a big celebrity? Well, I, and I guess he is kind of big, but he's an idiot. Right. Okay. And he's the guy who filmed a dead body in Japan. Oh right, okay. Have you heard about, no, you heard I heard about, about that. Even? Um, is it oh, worth okay. me looking well, up now, or? Uh, yeah, you can. I mean, I'm sure most people listening to this will know what it is. But anyway, there's this big vlogger called Jake Paul or Logan Paul. I think they're brothers, and one of them filmed. They one of them does a vlog every day, and one of them went to the, a Japanese suicide forest or a, a forest. Um, which is known for people killing themselves in, and they found a person who'd hung themselves, and they filmed themselves next to this guy and put it up on YouTube, and there was, quite rightly, a fucking outcry. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no, I've just um, I've just had a quick, quickly punched it in on Google, and I've just got um, uh, just a shot of this, this dipshit's dopey-ass fucking face. And uh, he, he he had a Christmas song, and the lyrics of the Christmas song were, buy that merch, buy that merch. He's the reason ISIS exists. <laughs> oh, you see, when you say stuff like that, I'm really kind of, I really want to go down the rabbit hole and watch watch some of this fucking dreadful shit, but I'll, 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 uh, I'll think better of it. I will abstain for now. Fucking I used to hell. watch, like, uh, the the housewives of Beverly Hills or whatever. And I was sure that when the cameras would stop shooting, these w women would put like their very conservative hijabs or burqas back on. And then, you know, and then they get paid by Al Qaeda because they were really sleeper agents creating dissent. Because I, I would, like, when I would watch that, that was like a fucking Al Qaeda training video. Like I cannot think of anything that would, that would ostracize people more than this shit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, like watching Jake Paul, I almost feel 
I, I, I almost feel not just alienated. I almost what would the word be? I what what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, well, not ashamed, no, or no, not ashamed. No, I'm not ashamed. Okay, radicalized. Yeah, when I watch, that's right. When I watch Jake Paul, I almost feel radicalized. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know exactly in what way, but and and anyway, the reason I brought him up with Top Gun was uh, he. He ha- his brand is called Maverick. Oh right, okay. I think, and the, there was a brand called Maverick before he had a brand called Maverick, and that brand very famously sent him a letter uh, telling him to stop calling his stuff Maverick, and it's the most condescending letter that's ever been written. Oh uh, really? Oh super. Yeah, bad. I'll find it if you want. Maverick Apparel did not cater for its name being hijacked in full by a vlogger catering to his evident lowest common denominator, narcissism, and who champions his scrotal injuries as a badge of pride in his quest of making a historical record (laughs) of inanity. Over three past months, Maverick Apparel has noticed a rapid and significant decline in its sales, reputation, and goodwill as a direct result of your repulsive, abhorrent, and mutton-headed conduct. In choosing to promulgate yourself and your more wallop across social media and champion yourself as an object of ridicule, hatred, and contempt, you have simultaneously infected and injured the good name of Maverick a parallel. That's it. Wow, that, that, that is superb. So that's a, that was... This was this was a precursor to a cease and desist, no, right? This is a legal document. Um, yeah, I guess it is a legal document. Um, that's it, that's I mean, it's it comes with a demand for him to stop using the Maverick name, so I guess it is. Yeah, I mean, they 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 really call him on his bullshit, though. I thought it would be a little bit more more restrained. I didn't realize they were just kind of flat out call him a fucking ding dong. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Your mutton headed behaviour. <laughs> Oh, I fucking love that. I haven't heard that in fucking years. I th- it definitely how, needs, needs to be called for How deep into like the that. scotch do you think the lawyers were? Because I imagine the lawyers are like, two lawyers have worked there forever. <laughs> it is like 4am at this point. Yeah, it, it feels like that. It's like, this is open and shut. We'll obviously fucking, we'll take him to the cleaners, it's fine. But we'd let, let's, let's ring this one out a little bit. Let's have a little bit of fun, all right? Well, I get the sense that it's actually a fairly small company. Not tiny, but a fairly small company. And they've just seen their sales destroyed by this. Right, okay. I, well, I mean, that, I don't know if that is the case, but that's the sense I get. And they're really pissed off and sending him a cease and desist isn't all right, really okay. enough. Yeah, it. okay, so these people are like, oh, it could not be more fucking incensed. It is, like, outrage in its most most, uh, most extreme sense. And they just, they cannot, you know, it's just boiling over onto the fucking page. Well, I mean, you heard what I said, it is, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's, that's superb. Um, I'm glad that that's also, not only did they send that, but it's also become, like, well, public domain. I mean, how long do you think it it, it took them... To decide on the word promulgate. Oh, I, th- I think they will have gone through so many drafts to, to yeah, land I was on say, that. Like, what draft did that come up? Like, ah, no, we could put promulgate here. I that, think that made draft draft eighteen worth it. Oh, yeah, I would say like the first couple of dozen drafts were, were only going to damage them. You know, um, <laughs> with the sheer volume of fucking explicit language. Vitriol. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, in a couple of drafts, it, it, you know, they, they essentially incite death threats, and they were going to only—they're only going to stitch themselves up. Um, so maybe he should be in Top Gun too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's. Um... I, I mean, I, I seem to remember that Maverick and Top Gun, or, or let's just let's just call him Tom Cruiser. Tom Cruiser and Top Gun is a twat. Like I, re- I mean, I remember him buzzing the flight tower and stuff like that. Right, okay. Are you sure you're just, just not uh, confusing it with your opinion of Tom Cruise's personality? Or maybe I'm <laughs> confusing it with Mystery Science Theater, where in this island Earth, someone does that and 
Tom Server goes, Maverick! <laughs> maybe I haven't seen Top Gun at all. I've just seen like that 20 seconds referencing Top Gun. I don't think there's any maybe. I think you've just fucking done yourself, my friend. You have exposed yourself. In fact, I've never seen any films that are, haven't been given the Mystery Science Theater 3000 treatment. <laughs> Yeah, well, like yeah. one day I'm gonna wa- I'm, a- I'm gonna accidentally walk into a movie theater for the first time and I'm gonna be like, why is no one talking through the movie? Where are the robots? Where's the silhouette? <laughs> <laughs> Immediately, straight back to the box office, demanding your money back. But it's all automated machines now, so you're, you're, you're absolutely fucked. The score. No, so it's like, oh, this is a machine. I'll just drag this in, and then it's just me sat next to like a, a coin counter. <laughs> You've, you know, you've dressed up with a wig, you know, you've given it a little bit of pomp and, pomp and circumstance. You're not above, a, a, you know, a little bit of production value. Oh, yeah, like I get a, uh, I get an Irish hat, one of those Paddy Day hats they have, for like, <laughs> you know, for like, like 50p. I get one of those and I put it on the massive, massive square robot just to make sure that anyone behind me really can't see any of the screen. <laughs> not for not yeah not because that's the purpose it's because you know in in your in your hurried dash to kind of gu- uh, gussy up this robot there's only an irish pub next door it was your only recourse i saw you um i, I don't know in my mind when I, you said uh dressing up this robot i i don't know i immediately saw like um like a pink lazy town wig on this robot for some reason whoa i know right okay Okay, and and is the is it like a normal sized lazy town wig, or is it like a huge wig that's going around all of this robot's head? Well, I mean, is this robot is this wig like is it a proper wig on this robot or is it like a skull cap? Well, I I immediately uh, I thought skull cap, but now that you have painted that picture, I cannot see anything else. And uh, a cigarette holder, and at the end there's like a big meaty cigar on this tiny cigarette holder. Like it's a long cigarette holder. It's like a breakfast at Tiffany's cigarette holder. Yes, yeah, yeah. And it's ju- it's just a fucking pepper army on the end. <laughs> like, there's no one else in the movie theater at this point because you're just like at the front kind of um, front kind of expands for the screen, just gently kind of uh, dressing up this robot. It's an incredible, incredibly uncomfortable watch because you are oh, romancing it after a while. That would make things better. I fucking hate going to the cinema. <laughs> I fucking hate going to the cinema because there's one rule in the cinema you can't play dress up when the movie starts playing shut your fucking idiot face and people can't do it oh right I you know, you if people can't do that then I'm going to start smoking yeah <laughs> yeah I'm going to start smoking and drinking and phoning my dad and being like yeah yeah I'm in this movie yeah oh no the movie's good but everyone around me is a fucking piece of shit <laughs> Well, I, I would just, you know... And I'm going to be calling him, and it's going to be on one of those telephones that's full of little sweets. One of those telephones that's full of those sweets that taste like chalk. <laughs> Fucking love hearts run off. Oh, dear. This is like... yeah. So this is like a Christmas from like 20 years ago, if not more, and you've held on to this for this exact moment, right? It's like, I, 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 one day I will need a cell phone that's full of Smarties. <laughs> It inc- you're an incredible, incredibly bright um, eight-year-old to have that kind of foresight. Incredibly bright, but also misapplied eight-year-old. <laughs> Do you remember those sweets that you get on a necklace? Oh, yeah, I remember that that, that fucking shite. Every- yes! <laughs> what, what, the, what is the point of that? I have no idea. I don't think I've ever had one, like, personally in my life. I just remember for, like... The spate of what six months at school, everyone had those fucking things, and they were always being launched in someone's fucking eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, that's what they were for. They were catapults. Yeah, I don't know. Do they still make them? I mean, there must have been some kind of must horrific be. injury involving those, right? Because they've been around for years at that prior to when they, you know, they were a fucking bother for me. And I'm, I'm yeah, and I'm fairly sure that, you know, that people have been applying them to that, you know, up until that point. I'm surprised there haven't been, like, countless fucking blindings, thanks to those little fuckers. Yeah, well, what, what's popular in schools now? It's those, uh, it's those Yu-Gi-Oh cards, isn't it? <laughs> those pocket monsters I've heard about. <laughs> Poly Pocket, Max Power Pockets. <laughs> Hot Pockets. Actioning it's about, man. It's all about pockets. Actioning man. <laughs> See how he A- gestures with his fist. 
Action Man, do you have something that needs to be done now? Take your form and Action Man will rubber stamp <laughs> it and get it actioned. <laughs> Notary Public Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ken. <laughs> That's it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, fucking hell. I don't know why that's tickled me so much. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm thinking of uh, Aqua and Barbie Girl and Bald Ken. Yeah. Oh, fucking hell. If you, if you look at that video, he actually has hair around his ears. It's very weird. It is. Yeah, it, it was weird. I seem to remember that. It was weird. There's a bad habit at the place where I work with that fucking song, right? Where everyone, or in, everyone always kind of sings it at one point during the week, right? If anyone kind of re- remotely hums it or says even like a couple lines of, you know, um, mm-hmm. of the, the chorus, someone will eventually pick it up. I mean, it's almost like a fucking, it's like the Twilight Buck in 101 Dalmatians, right? Someone could say one word, right? Quietly under their voice. Well, and well what's the Twilight Buck? It's, um, it was like a code that they, uh, dogs were barking, but they, a message they par- passed on, um, uh, like a chain through the countryside, right? Oh, yeah, right. I remember that. And, um, you know, it can st- where I work, there's like two separate kind of uh, kitchens and warehouses. Factions. Yeah, there's factions. the Twilight, Twilight people and the Aqua people. <laughs> <laughs> and I swear to God, like one person can say one word and within 20 minutes, you can hear, um, you can hear someone else singing, singing the response like down, down the fucking corridors. It's, it's unfucking believable I mean, Do I... Do you know the words to Barbie Girl? I don't know. No one goes I'm a Barbie girl, 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 <laughs> I'm a Barbie girl. It's like that, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it's, it's 20 minutes of that. But That, that, that bit where the, it's deeper, that's Bill Maher's bit. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, my, my problem is that this is, you know, this will be picked up for six hours of, you know, of a work day. So you can... Barbie, uh, Barbie, Barbie, Barbie. <laughs> It's not that far off, man. It's really... Bobby! Bobby! <laughs> oh. You know, it's something, like, it's something like one in six Dutch people owns that album. Yeah, something... Album! An album! I seem to remember, like, in the early days of YouTube, right, when, like, people were breaking, like, six or seven figures for the first time. Oh, it was the first one to get, like, a hundred million or something, was it? Uh, I don't... I, I can't remember quite what it was, but it was like one of the really unlikely videos. Whatever was popular at the time, there was something, you know, which made like sense. Maybe it was something like Beyonce or something like that. But then like right behind, Beyonce had like 30 million views. And maybe this is, I, I don't know, I want to say like before 2010 or something like that. I don't, I, um, I'm sure that's wildly inaccurate, but I do remember it's like a short second, right? Yeah. On this yeah. list, of top 10 list was like Aqua at like 26 and everyone was like, what the fuck? Why? It's like the Swedes yeah. have just been mashing it like on and on and on and on and on. I have no idea of what it said now, but I'm sure it's, you know, way past the fucking billion. I think that's fantastic. I mean, I think at one point we could do uh, a podcast where we remember YouTube because there's so much to talk about there. To, much to my chagrin, um, Barbie Girl has only has clocked in a paltry 468 million views, not the not the billion plus I was hoping for. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I do feel like uh, YouTube is kind of is useful for people putting you know targets on themselves, really, because it. Uh, I know. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, YouTube makes it very, very easy for me to uh, distinguish what I really don't like in people and people I don't like. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, he- hence my essay, Logan Paul, this is what's wrong with America. Yeah. <laughs> I, th- think, I think that's actually too direct. I think it's, it's either Logan Paul, this is what's wrong with the West, or just Logan Paul, this is what's wrong. <laughs> species wide this is what's wrong species wise what we need is Neil Breen to come down here and cleanse the world <laughs> oh. brought it back brought it back to Top Gun we've not said anything about Top Gun oh, we've, you know we're what, approaching what the 50 minute what, maybe we can close the episode without <laughs> discussing it whatsoever this can be a, a two part <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dude, I just have to. I'm, I'm just quickly checking out what Neil Breen's get, uh, costume is in um, part three. Because if he is Jesus, as you say, I need to see what it is. He has the vest from Double Down. 
<laughs> you know the vest with all the medals? Uh. Remember when he says that? I've been awarded every medal. <laughs> every um. medal me- medals for bravery. Medals for conduct. Medals for swimming. <laughs> medals for athleticism and <laughs> honourable. <laughs> Med- medals for passing a, ske- a speech check. He, George said, saying speech check. Medals for catering. One, one, of, one of my talents is barter. <laughs> so, sorry, that's, that's your... Uh, you're going for your impression there. Is that correct? My impression of a... Of a Elder Scrolls Oblivion character. Neil Breen is as his you face do me is too much honor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no nudity like in Double Down, but there is a part where his his love interest slash niece, I don't really know, where a, a girl with a pretty woman with lots of makeup uh lifts her top up and you see it from behind and you see she's got a tiger tattoo. Because the tiger, right, the tiger is used as a symbol, right? And she has a tiger tattoo, and that's when he knows she is most worthy of him. Right, okay. yeah, symbolism, that's, that's good, with Sim- actual sim- symbols. Symbolism. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's, that's I, filmmaking smart. You know, I, I worked, okay, so I worked on, um, oh, I can't remember what it was. I, I want to say I worked... I worked on a, t- a TV show, but I didn't. But I think I must have been in a studio at one point where they were doing a pilot for something. And it, they were doing a pilot for something and it, they had this kind of TV set and it, they had these three TV cameras and they were going to film it like it was for TV. And it was something set in a, a state agent's office. I think it might have been Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. They were doing something like a, they were doing a version of that. Right, OK. For a slot. I can't, I don't know. And uh, right, the director, the director said, oh, well, I want all the, all the lights to have green filters. And the, the producer or someone said, OK. Uh, well, we can do that, but why? And the director said, because it'll make it more filmic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're in good hands. Right, listen, if, if there's anyone listening to this who wants to get into film and TV, you can do it. You can do it, because what I've learned is what, film, TV, it, lofty professions, law, doctor, 90% of people anywhere are fucking idiots. Yep. They're, they're just people who have the confidence to talk their own shit and somehow wedge themselves into an industry. Yeah, persistence is definitely the key. Not talent, intellect, taste, refinement, or any of those things you think would be an asset. Mm. Absolutely not. You ever had shit stuck to your ass hair? That's not intelligent, but it's not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need. All you need to be successful. Not not just in film, in life. All you need to do is hold on. Yeah. Um, so I th- I think Neil Breen. Um, I think there, there could be a clash between Neil Breen and Tom Cruise. Or I think that Neil Breen might cast himself as Maverick. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm I'm going. I'm sorry. I'm going back onto Top Gun now. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. I think we should. You know, we should try at least for five minutes. No. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I think Top Gun Two is something they've definitely floated. I think uh, so. You- I, I think because I think I. I think they've got. I don't know if it's a reboot. Uh, yeah, no, it will be a reboot. Uh, slated for 2019. It's just uh, listed as Top Gun Maverick. Oh yeah, okay. Top Gun Maverick is scheduled for release on the 19th of July, 2019. There we go. Let's see if that gets pushed back. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll, you know, we'll 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 discuss it at length when it comes out without having seen that movie either. <laughs> either. Well, that's okay, when we talk so about it, fucking fateful findings. It has to be like uh, Tom Cruise is. Uh, you know, like a group captain or something on on an air force base or a or a joint forces base or something, and he he organizes flight flight patterns or something because there's no way he's flying now. Well, there's no way he's flying a fucking jet. Yeah, yeah, not. I mean, not with. Uh... <sighs> not, not not when no, he's fifty five. <laughs> Sorry, no. you don't you don't have fifty five year old pilots. No, I want to believe that in, even in that cinematic universe, you know, the footage of uh, his appearance on Oprah is still like a thing, and he's obviously, you know, they've called into question his mental stability, and he was written off. You know, his license to pilot was written off. You know, instantly, and now, to, oh, it, yeah, Tom Cruise spends his time reclining on the beaches, where, in this instance, uh, Neil Breen is trying to shoot. Tom Cruise tries to weigh in, 
And that's it. That gets fucking Breen's heckles right the fuck up. Like Neil Breen was trying to do his own fucking Top Gun thing, right? And he's, this fucking sends him on absolutely fucking ape shit, right? And this is not... This movie is more like the story of how... of uh, It's like a documentary of... Um, Neil Breen trying to get this done. It's actually just some some other dude on on this beach, just with his fucking camera, watching the the, the sloppiest fucking fist fight between these old dudes. <laughs> this is a bit where Neil Breen says, "No, my film is going to be about how a navy pilot takes down the corrupt government." <laughs> like Tom Cruise approach is really amicable at first, right? Uh, hey Neil, I'm a big fan of your films. <laughs> Another dynamite impression there. Um, that and gives him like, like Tom Cruise. What are you talking about? Yeah, no, I'm I'm being deathly fucking serious. Uh, hey, Katie, give this a suck. Isn't that good? Yeah, I put butter all over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's from uh, from the cookbook of Elron himself. Yeah. Oh, dear. that that's got to be my new ringtone. I'm gonna. Everybody uh, loves a bit of salmon, Katie. Mm. <laughs> oh, by the way, Katie, I love you so much, and if you ever try to leave me, I'll kill you and everyone you love. <laughs> this is why we get listened to by litigation lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> it's about Tom Cruise trying to achieve OT9. <laughs> oh. I mean, I, I don't know. Do you think he's like flying a little grob somewhere and he's teaching people how to fly for the first time? He's not teaching people jets or anything. Or do you think like the first line in the movie is going to be Tom Cruise coming out of a flight simulator and saying... I don't care what the tests say. You're not too old to do this, Maverick. By you know some ancillary character. No, I reckon. They, if, listen, if he's going to be a navy pilot, they really do have to address address him being that old. Oh, I think so. No, I think he was. You know, he was uh, cut out like completely fucking disgraced. Um, we we find him like um, it's it's one of those kind of like more elaborate like wipeout game. I, is it, I don't say I don't suppose they still have wipeout, but. Like one of those... Uh, oh, like, yeah, Wipeout. Or oh, Whip 3 out. Oh, yeah, whatever that fucking shite was. And oh, what? <laughs> what? No, Wipeout was good. Ah, I don't know. I always say it was one of the first games I had on PlayStation. I hated it because I could never do it. It was too hard for me. So I gave up. Fucking rage quit that and I never never went back to it. Yeah, um, right. But okay. you've got, it's like he's this... He, He's just like the lone nutter in this arcade, always hogging this flight simulation. You know, the wipeout machine. He reckons he's got it fucking down pat because of his his past, and all he's doing is just being very uncomfortable for a lot of kids around there. And that's when Neil Breen. So Tom Tom Cruise, he's he's known in this arcade on this wipeout machine for being super good because he's an ex Navy pilot. You know, and he's there. He's got his he's got his Navy jacket on. You know, he's he looks like fucking Tom Clancy. He's got his baseball cap on, his sunglasses on, he's got a little paunch, but you can tell, you know, he knows his shit, and, you know, he knows all the kids and everything, he's not, he's not really, really friendly with all the kids at the arcade, but he's friendly enough, you know, he's not a weird guy, he's just a guy who's there, it's a bit weird that he's there, but it's okay, Mm -hmm. and then one day he comes back, he's like, right, okay, right, Uh, just drink my, drink my rip-off monster, yeah, have some peanuts for breakfast, and, right, cracks and knuckles, you know, Get started on on wipeout today. This will be great. Got my navy pension. This is what I do. And then immediately, <laughs> immediately, immediately, he starts playing. The first thing he sees, he he doesn't even see it. He just knows there's something wrong. He's like someone, someone's someone's been touching my sticks. Someone, what's, what's been going on? Goes onto the high score screen. Fucking Neil Breen's only got the high score. Yeah, you, you, Jesus. Can, you can tell because you've got MB at the top. But before, right, you know, it's all him. It's all his fucking thing. And he Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise. No, Tom no, Cruiser. he puts yeah. COK, COK. So it's just cock, 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 cock. He's, <laughs> he's very he's juvenile like that. But it's his code. It's his code. You know, it's, it's his thing. People know he's cock. Yeah, 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 exactly. But he comes back. He has like one day, like fucking one day's break. He fucking finds NB. Goes fucking it, ape shit. He doesn't clock that it's Neil Breen immediately. So he just he is storming through the ar- arcade, just curb stomping these children, trying to fuck, get answers, find out what's going Neil on. Neil Breen, you mean that loser who's always on the air hockey machine? It can't be him. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, and then we see Neil Breen. He's got like these. Got like he's got like wrist, what those like the sweatbands like his wrists and around his head and stuff like that. He's got, like, he's got, <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got like a real kind of baggy, 
baggy black shirt that he's cut the sleeves off. Yeah, of. but he's got like these kind of like bum skimming kind of like uh, sports shorts on, right? It's not made out of denim. Oh, <laughs> like, like they're never nudes, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I see that. Oh, fucking hell. And it's really, it's really quite, it's really uncomfortable to watch because this is Neil to look at because this is Neil Breen, right? So the, you know, yeah, up you can to see it, Neil Breen's ovaries. Oh, fucking hell. I mean, up to his knees, right, is like fucking red. I mean, like lobster fucking red, but his thighs are as white as fucking snow. There's, you right, can never yeah. miss it, right? It just draws your eyes to those horrible fucking shorts. The, these, these denim shorts are so tight, like it, there must be one bollock down each leg. Oh, fucking hellfire. There's always one parent every day that has to have a word with him. It's like, please, go to the bathroom and just kind of, just go to the bathroom. <laughs> just stay in there. Like, and the, the conclusion that the parents always always have, they go over to him to have a word. And the conclusion, very much like with Tom Cruise, is, is kind of like, yeah, he, he's a weird guy, but uh, just leave him alone. He's, he, he's just a bit sad. Just leave, leave it. If he wants to spend all his fucking quarters all day playing air hockey with eight-year-olds... That's fine. I, 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 you know, I trust him not to do anything weird, but I will have a word with Timmy and tell him not to get into his car. <laughs> I don't think it's possible they're going to invite that kind of scenario. But yeah, just yeah, forewarned is fore, forearmed. L- listen, Beeblebrox, <laughs> I, I don't want you to stay away from him, but I don't want you to deliberately talk to him. If he says hello, you, you do what you said, you be polite, you talk to him, he's an adult, you have to talk to him. But... Don't hang out with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just eye contact, nod your head, smile, keep walking. That's fine. Don't accept. Don't accept a butterscotch from him. Exactly. And don't put your food and drink. Don't let your any food and drink out of your sight. Right. And if you ever see him dipping his penis into any ranch dressing or anything like that, stay away <laughs> from that ranch dressing. Even if you think you can get you can get the stuff around the rim of the the bowl, not the penis. The stuff around the, what am I talking about? If you even if you think you can get the stuff around the rim without it being <laughs> no, it's all infected. No. <laughs> it's like, Dad, why on earth would you tell me this? The dad just <laughs> kind of raises his arm and points to like the conf- uh, the concessions counter and there's a picture behind the bar <laughs> of Neil Breen squatting over this punch bowl. <laughs> Wasn't there a thing with Boy George when he would didn't Boy George say that he would dip his penis into a cup of tea? What, like he was aspiring to do it or that he's done it? Oh, <laughs> like one day I will dip my <laughs> penis into a cup of tea. No, it's, I, the only, I think, it's the only mountain left to climb. I think Boy George said that a cup of tea is better than sex and someone drew a picture of Boy George dipping his, a, his a bollocks into a cup of tea. <laughs> uh, well, Obviously. Naturally. Excellent stuff. The height of wit and repartee right there. Yeah, well, welcome to the boys. <laughs> we kind of started with what if Neil Breen directed this, but obviously, if he directed it, he'd be in it as much as anyone else, at least. Mm-hmm. What do you think the direction would be like if Neil Breen had uh, if Neil Breen had a hundred million dollars? What would what would this film be like? I I figured like there'd be loads of like flight sequences right in this movie, but again, just like built out of all the stock footage you can muster. So, like. Every plane that he's, you know, he's reputedly um, uh, piloting is different in every fucking shot, right? Right. So, like, in, in one, in one, it's like Tom Cruise is, like, in a jet. And in the other, because it's far away, they thought no one would notice, it's like a B-52. I was going to say, like, a 747 or something like that. <laughs> it's like a 747. Like one of those like fucking, th- a- those new beluga, f- like, freight planes you can find. Well, if, if Neil Breen didn't have any money and he filmed it, I imagine that a lot of it would be he'd take his actor, which would be himself, and say, all right, I need you to pretend to be a fighter pilot. And it's great because we'll, we'll do it next to this this window. And it's like a window on a 747 and someone shoots him next to the window of a 747 like he's flying it. <laughs> it's like, sir, can you please put that camera away? Like, don't get, don't get the, don't try not to get the seat in the front in shot. <laughs> please, you're making the other, uh, the other passengers quite, uh, yeah, because quite nervous. it's just Neil Breen going. Whoosh, whoosh. Well, he can't really make those noises. See, eject, 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 eject. Because he's he's done he's done a little bit of research and he knows that pilots in these jets they have like flight masks. So what he's done, right? He's oh no, he's, he's got a Bane mask. No, no, he's got like a scuba mask and he's just painted it black, right? So he can't make the whooshing noises. So he's going to have to do that in post. 
Oh, fu- that's that's high production. Thinking about doing stuff in post. <laughs> Always ask the child in the seat behind. Just like, can you just go while I say this, please? I, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of that money would be used to try and buy Neil Breen out of the project now. Yeah, maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe. But somehow he's leveraged himself in where he can't, he can't be bought out. He's like the, he's like three of the exec producers. This is like turns Neil, Br- uh, Neil Brain and the, Neil Brain, <laughs> Neil Brain, brain Neil, Neil Breen's, and then actually Neil Breen, and he says, Ah, you want to get me out of the project, but you didn't realise that Neil Brain and Neil Breen's are both me. <laughs> if you look closely, Damien, those names are actually very similar to my name. I, see, I can see that, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you layer one on top of the other, you can't tell the difference. I reckon um, Neil Breen is actually like really, 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 really competent uh, programmer, right? And hence the kind of interest with a lot of uh, like hacking issues in his in his movies. Once he, they they get him <laughs> hacking issues, I can't find a good keyboard. <laughs> My power book from 1980 doesn't work. <laughs> Risk take. My and power I, book. What the fuck is a power book? Uh, it's one of the yeah. It must be one of the old notebooks. No, I'm sure. You, I, I don't. I, I don't know. I, it's not really important. It's just a fucking. Sh- it's an old old fucking computer. The only only brand name I really know is Apple Newton. Yeah. Well, I think no. I think the power book might have been one of their earlier laptops, if I remember rightly. Um, again, not really important. Uh, yeah, no, I yeah, reckon. And then, then they brought out what everyone loves now, the power top. <laughs> now, Neil Breen's plan when he got booted off this production was to kind of design this program, right, that would implant his image, right, um, when, they would, uh, when they were doing the editing. Um, so that even though he could be removed, you know, physically from the set, um, his, he will still be in the movie. He will still have some claim to it. N- Neil Breen is a hologram and um, Tom Cruise is Dorothy. And Neil Breen's the Wizard of Neil Breen. Right, okay. Neil Breen's the Wizard of Neil Breen, but he's also the Neil Breen in Double Neil Breen, oh. um, which is a, sequ- a sequel to Fateful Neil Breen. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, all I'm seeing is this fever dream. Uh, it's just look, Neil Breen's disembodied head, like 20 times over, just circling me now. He's not saying a word, he's just slowly staring me down. It's okay, fucking serious- horrible. Seriously, I think if Neil Breen directed Top Gun, I think that what what would happen is... Um, they would make the the powers that be the studio would make it so that Tom Cruise was the main character, and I think Neil Breen would begrudgingly accept this. But I think Neil Breen would also be every other character in the movie. Mm-hmm. I think I think he would think he could do an Eddie Murphy, and it would be like Neil Breen in a fat suit, Neil Breen in blackface. I think it would be all of that, because I'm sure he thinks he's a great actor. <laughs> So I'm still reading from Neil Breen in blackface. Like him, Neil Breen in they're blackface. They're generous. They give him a trailer, right? And it's like the sec that no one knows about this. He just had this brainwave while he was taking his shit, right? And he just walks out with all this on his fucking face. And they're like immediately get back in there, right? <laughs> and it's all it's all in Las Vegas as well. It's all like near his house, so he can walk to the set from his house. That's a stipulation. And he he refuses to have any script because I'm okay. I wanted to ask you this: Do you think a lot of what he does, a lot of what he says is improvised because i certainly get that sense i kind of yeah i, I would say that but i think imp- improvised is, is a little bit kind of generous uh really i think it's what he's doing kind of defies the uh uh defines the definition of imp- improvisation i think uh it just seems like he can't really remember his lines all the time so he's like ah oh, that's kind of it yeah but i can't yeah kind of I, I, I just i i just chalk that up to him being like a gibbering moron more than anything else rather than him trying to kind of you know treat his role in a sort of method capacity or something like that i'm just thinking that that, you know he could get in his blackface come out and not have a script and everyone would be there you know in baking las vegas weather with all this blackface dripping down his actual face and everyone's like okay all right so you want us to start shooting mr breen okay and they're just waiting for him to say something racist yeah, I mean, waiting, he, he, waiting he, for it to come out of his mouth, and then all that comes out of his mouth is, and you'll find that ju- the judiciary, the lawyers, and the judges are all corrupt, and <laughs> it's just that it's just the same shit from him again. Yeah, but this, this time, you know, he kind of defied expectation with all this blackface. They were waiting to trip him up, and what happened was he did it in the thickest, you know, most ham-handed Japanese accent he could muster, and people were absolutely fucking dumbstruck. 
This has just become an assassination of Neil Breen's character now, hasn't it? It has been for a long time, I think. Uh, I think I, he, I, I respect the guy a lot. He does make his own movies. Right. <laughs> no studio, no studio <laughs> interference. No, I do, I do respect him in a, in a way. I mean, I don't think his movies are any good. Uh, I don't, you know, now I don't really think they're even particularly enjoyable. Certainly, the one I watched last night, Pass Through, that wasn't very fun. No, and uh... I'm kind of, you know, it's it's very much like watching Double Down again. I don't need to do that. Yeah, and even when I, uh, even when I watched it, that was I wouldn't say something. I'm mean, I'm I'm glad to say that I've done it, but it was not something I enjoyed doing necessarily. Definitely, the second half was was pretty bad. Oh yeah, it was. It was. It was something else. So if Neil Breen directed Top Gun, what? How can we leave this? If Neil Neil Breen directed Top Gun, it'd be amazing. <laughs> or directed Top Top Gun Two. It would how be do amazing. We fin- how do we finish this? What's our conclusion? Are we discarding the two uh, the two nutcases in the uh, in the arcade then? Because we set the stage for a showdown between him and like Fat Tom Cruise. Okay, that's the film then. The film is just about these two. Yeah, that yeah that that's that's good. You're right to take it back there. The film is about these two guys who um who who start this rivalry rivalry about who can get the high score and wipe out and then it probably ends with them being friends maybe it doesn't who cares no uh, no i i imagine one of them like lands a good 14 pound bowling ball on the other one's skull you know one of them is taken out of the picture for good but we won't tell you who you know that's that suspense making right there it happens in the first three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just weeping over the other's body for the next 80 minutes. Oops, sorry. I just uh, just hit the... Ooh, 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 I'm getting some interference. Oh, it's those Russian MiGs. <laughs> I'm being hacked. <laughs> what about if Top, if Top Gun 2 is just about uh, like an invasion of a Caribbean country and it's Tom Cruise bombing the fucking shit out of this tiny islands airport and they've got like they've got like two aa guns on the entire island that don't have a fucking chance of hitting him oh yeah yeah and, and it's just and it's just like the most patriotic thing ever and all he all he's doing is bombing this carpet in this thir- third world country yeah it's a blitz it's it's a blitz oh it's that all you know tom uh, cruise is now a kamikaze pilot right but he's a kamikaze pilot who can live through it <laughs> Well, because he has some kind of like superhuman ability, or is he because just because he's Jesus? <laughs> oh, of course, I we forget. Need, combine Tom Cruise and Neil Breen. It's it's okay. So it's Neil Breen on screen, but it's Tom Cruise's voice. All right. So like when they're having the showdown in the arcade, right? They like because it's one of those arcades that has a bowling alley, right? It's not just um, the show. The showdown like makes its way over to like the lanes, right? And they go right down to where like the right down to where the pins are, and there's some kind of thing where. No, they go for one goes for the other's neck and, and gets them down onto the ground, right? And they get caught up into the machine, and after that, they're kind of like merged into one person, right? So now Tom Cruise, Maverick, is now also Breen Jesus. It's it's like Metal Gear Solid or something. It's just <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> it's just brilliant. But also, his hand is Satan, <clears throat> which is why he's constantly touching young women on the on the front bottom. <laughs> Elaborate as to so how did, as to what a front button is. <laughs> how did he get his Satan hand? Uh, he he lost his hand in uh, a kamikaze mission where he doesn't die, and uh, of course, you know the thing to remember about uh, Tom Breen is that he spent seven years in medical school whilst also being a pilot, while whilst also working at a Wendy's to pay himself through these places, and uh, he finds a hand. And he he sews it on right, to okay. himself because that would work. So like, this, so he's got one mission. Then he yeah, he uh, he kamikazes, but he does his usual bit. He ejects like right at the last second, escapes the flames and all that kind of stuff. But he just kind of happens to land on this kind of occult bur- burial site or something like that, and finds kind of, for lack of a better term, demon remains. Is that what you're saying? And he just he he uses so that. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Does he necessarily yeah. lose his hand at all, or? Or he's just like, oh, that hand looks better. I'll chop this one off. No, you, don't, you know, you can keep. You know, you could have a third hand. I don't know. Like, where would that would that come from? His chest or from his forehead? <laughs> <laughs> but how many thumbs would he have then, Damien? All oh, right, okay. So he's not at the occult burial site, but he sees this cat that's like 
almost it's 80 percent thumb right and it leads him like a sort of spiritual vision quest to this burial site. <laughs> like you, you you'd almost describe it more as a thumb really a <laughs> thumb with like some cat features yeah it just it's a thumb that kind of spits out hairballs on from underneath the thumbnail right oh and it as i say it kind of undulates like a caterpillar it's really okay, slow. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> yeah, right. And he's like, I love that. <laughs> and promptly devours it. Yeah, and then it, then they go on all these like wacky hijinks. He ends up f- flying his tornado or his F seventeen or whatever through the Kremlin, decapitates Vlad Putin with the the razor edged wingtips of his shoes and then at the end it all it zooms out and you realize oh fuck it's been tom cruise kevin spacey and neil breen playing on this arcade machine it's all a game oh that's yeah so we've got yeah that's that that, that's science fiction and and then right at the end they're like oh that was good wasn't it and the final word is spacey's and spacey says anyone for a round of barrymore watch (laughs) credits Uh, are we done i think so i think we put a nice little bow on that one Okay, so next week we're doing something slightly different. We're not uh, changing the podcast, but I thought maybe this is something that we could do every so often uh, where we we have a... I mean, I don't want to say debate because that sounds like it might be an actual intelligent conversation, but we have a discussion about which is shitter, Facebook or Twitter. I guess in the future we'll be talking about which is shitter, a shit film or another shit film. But I thought for this one we would do Facebook and Twitter. Oh. Yeah, I, the, yeah. The answer yeah. is Snapchat. <laughs> it is all equally fucking offensive. Yes, I think you might have to cut that out because that is pretty much what we're going to say. <laughs> yeah, well, whatever. Um, so I uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, bye. Yeah, thanks very much for listening. Goodbye. <laughs>